So can we talk about the uh, the Pinnacle project now? Because that sure. thing sure, that sure. was awesome. Yeah, just tell us about that and you know kind of the the idea behind that and what it was. Yeah, well, again, <clears throat> the idea again came from uh, uh, a directive uh, from Ted and Mickey Harrison of you know building the next, go, taking it to the next level, build the next great ship, and yeah. so forth. So that one, I you know I just started designing it on my own without naval. I by that time I felt like I had enough experience that I could do. Uh, a layout of a ship that uh, that would be um, um, practical. You know that I knew that if 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 I get it right, you know Ted Carnival liked it, then you know I could work with a shipyard and we could fit the engine in and the 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 casing and the exhaust pipes and structure and pipes and air conditioning and so forth. And developed a really great ship, which would be the, which would have been the largest ship of the, of the world at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I designed, by the way, the the um, the Destiny, which is the Carnival Destiny, which was our first Carnival ship in Italy, was the was over 100,000 tons. I think it was 103,000 tons. And uh, I was put into the, the uh, Guinness Book of Records for being the architect who designed the first passenger ship over 100,000 tons. This ship was going to be. Uh, um, more like 200,000 tons, maybe a little bit. More. <laughs> so I, you know, I designed, you know, came up with all of these n- new ideas and created a, you know, what I thought was an amazing uh, plan. It would have been fantastic. Instead of one restaurant, two restaurants, we had seven restaurants so people could go around. A lot of things that still aren't even being done today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and then I always felt that the, it, the bigger the ship you do, that you would always be, um, open to the criticism of this ship's just too big. There's just too many people on board. You know, how do you get around, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, so how do you overcome that problem? Well, number one, you put on facilities on board the ship that you couldn't have on a smaller ship. It just wouldn't make any economic sense. And then the, um, <laughs> then the uh, idea came to me to alleviate the, the Getting around the ship uh, issue, I created a uh, a people mover. So there was a um, a track along the top of the ship that was that you know uh, went around the entire ship. That uh, that a you know a, a car that uh, a car that would ride on a rail and would go around the ship with various stops. You know, not unlike things you see at the airport, for example, you know, take people to the car rental place or parking garage or something like that. So, you know, not only would you have the uh, ability to move people around easily and conveniently, but it would be a thrill at the same time. You know, that Mm -hmm. you have to see as you're going around would just be remarkable. And I thought, okay, well, that's good, but but that's not enough. So I made at the uh, at at a certain point of the ship that the. people mover car would come to this stop at, at the upper deck and that would then be an elevator and take the whole car down to the main passenger deck, which would then allow it to go back and forth, cover the whole main public room deck and then go back, go up and continue the route around. So it was it was a real tour de force and uh, something I think that would have been talked about. And it stemmed from an idea that I had long ago, putting a, some sort of roller coaster type ride on the ship on the upper deck, which I thought would be Fantastic. And now, uh, as a matter of fact, Carnival's uh, new ship that they just they started building, which since I retired, I'm not involved in, but that's actually going to have the roller coaster on it that I, <laughs> I, I came up with that idea, I don't know, 25 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. And it was, mm-hmm. you know, the, that, and the, so the Pinnacle Project was designed. It had unbelievable um, uh, a big side deck at, at the main public room level where there'd be a, a lazy river ride. There'd be uh, basketball courts. Uh, uh, there was an indoor entertainment area for uh, sort of Cirque du Soleil acts. Huge um, um, theater, again, that, that had production possibilities that would rival, you know, the best places in Vegas. And even even the smaller entertainment lounge was probably equal to the big lounges we had on previous ships. So <laughs> it was a real exciting project, and and it was a real project because then we worked with the shipyard, 
very good looking ship. They, I work with the naval architect uh, designer at Fincantieri, Maurizio Chergol, who was a, you know, most naval architects are really engineers, but this guy was a designer as well. I mean, he had that sensitivity to beauty, to shape, to form. And we had an amazing collaboration. The ship was just wonderful. The people at Carnival were nuts about it. Ted was nuts. Mickey was nuts. Even the price looked like it was going to be affordable. But then the uh, then uh, the Spanish Inquisition came, and the uh, that's <laughs> the uh, euro started going up, and the price was based on euros. And that deviation of I don't know 15, 20 percent threw the project into the non non-profitable layers. Now, I would have gone ahead with it, but of course, I wasn't the owner and I wasn't a businessman and they, you know, Carnival, you know, part of their huge success is that they're, you know, financial responsibility. And uh, so that project didn't go ahead. We designed another ship, a little bit lesser of that, uh, called the, the uh, uh, Project Next Generation, which incorporated some of these ideas plus others. And again, it was just too expensive. By that time, uh, you know, the, the shipbuilding prices are going up and up and, uh, you know, and, and, and then that continues to this day. Uh, so uh, it was, you know, probably the biggest professional disappointment I had in, in my shipbuilding career. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's a shame. <laughs> yeah, totally. Especially because it was so, so almost there. And then for just to not go through because of, you know, basically oh, yeah. something that you can't even control, it must just be incredibly frustrating. It was incredibly frustrating. Well said. Yeah. And, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's it. Yeah. And there was a really cool, uh, you guys made a whole kind of digital mock-up of it that's on YouTube, which is really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is exciting. <laughs> Somehow it got pirated out. I don't know how that happened, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it did. Uh, the original version is a little nicer because it's not grainy and <laughs> so forth. But it, nevertheless, right. it was an exciting uh, it was an exciting project. And, uh, you know, the idea was we felt is that, you know, you the key to the growth of cruising has always been bring new people in. People have never cruised before. And I thought, excuse me, I wasn't alone in this thinking that that uh, having this biggest ship in the world with all these facilities, a people mover and lazy rivers and basketball courts and giant slides that were 10 stories high and things, water slides and things like that, you know, that would that would create a buzz. That would create a talk that mm -hmm. that then it would take people and, you know, the wife says to the husband, you know, let's take a cruise. Nah, I don't want to take a cruise. But we can go in this great ship. And so I read about it. And, uh...